active students sa atin dito yung gusto mag-share ng idea or, or um, a great takeaway from this week. Sina dito? Um, you can unmute yourself. Wala ba? Wala ba kayo nakuhang magandang um, idea or ways how to uh, protect yourself online by digital footprints? Um, by, by, you know, um, for me, it was a lot of information from Doc uh, Likot, but I think it really helps. So from now on, we are not going to put in the, the, the details in our Facebook page, but it will just be exclusively with our um, media, uh, with our uh, Media Civics uh, Lab Facebook group and in our group chat. Because that's what we've learned from Doc Ligot. So before I, um, before I say a lot of my, my thoughts, let me introduce to you um, our speaker today. That's going to be Mel Aguilar, and she will be talking about alternative media groups. So Mel is a media studies and film uh, lecturer of short content manager and filmmaker. She has a uh, certificate on new media and journalism from Ball State University under the Department of St uh, Department the U.S. Department of State's study of the U.S. Institute's program. So magkasama sila, magkasama sila ni Gab in their program in the U.S. So she's also a contributor for Voice um, International Film in Media Journals and is currently taking her doctorate degree in development studies at the University of the Philippines, Diliman. So let's have on the screen Ms. Mel Aguilar. Hi, Jared. Thank you so much for that intro. <laughs> so, hello, guys. Good evening. So, it's me again. <laughs> and um, I've been seeing um, familiar faces. I remember Rahim, no? Um, he was one of the um, participants last time, no? Talagang um, todo bigay <laughs> sa, ano, sa discussion. So, um, ayun. Good evening, everyone, again. So, I'll just share my screen with you to kick this lecture off. Um, and I hope everyone is having a great Friday so far. <laughs> hey guys, can you see my screen now? Just checking if you can see my screen. Hello? Hello? Yes? Okay. Um, okay lang hindi nakikita yung um, no pop-outs or anything? It's okay? Clear? Clear naman yung screen? Okay. Alright. So, um, let me just um, start off my presentation. Okay, so before we kick things off, guys, um, just a few, um, ano lang, um, a little bit of house rules. So not really like like rules, rules, but I just would like um, everyone to be on mute, especially if someone's talking. So that would be me most of the time. Para lang din, um, uh, magkaintindihan tayo and so that we are free from distraction. So is that okay with you guys? Yes. And thank you for confirming. And um, you are um, so after I lay down my lecture um, tonight, um, we have a Q and A section wherein we can discuss all of the um, everything that you've learned in the lecture, and so that we can also have a free flowing um, discussion of ideas and takeaways. Okay, so please wag kayo mahiya. And what we're aiming for in this lecture is that we can engage, na, and have uh, and take a. Uh, uh, the discourse into um, a, a higher level, no? So, um, so we'll take things from there, okay? So, and if you have questions along the way, you may reserve it in the Q&A section, okay? And that will be towards the end of the lecture. All right, so... All right. Sorry for that. Okay, so what to expect in this lecture? Um, first, of course, um, the students are given an introduction to alternative media in comparison to mainstream media. So in here in this lecture, we will distinguish the difference between alternative media um, compared to mainstream media. Kung ano bang difference neto and what the role uh, and what the what's the crucial role of alternative media. So and why do we have 
alternative media? Why is it existent? And why is it um, important? No? And reflecting upon your exposure to mainstream media, students are able to determine the gaps in information dissemination that need to be addressed and questioned. But of course, um, like in our um, previous lecture that we've had, um, diba, we've discussed about the media landscapes in the Philippines. No? So of course, there might be some manipulation in and information dissemination and of course things are framed diba? and recently you've had your lecture on framing no which is really good by the way because it's it's a it's a technical um and a critical issue that needs to be discussed and um it's more of a and it's theory based so maganda na nagkaroon kaya ng foundations no and very very timely um, especially in today's um, in today's uh, society and um, land and media landscape, we're in disinformation and framing, and um, all of those um, all of those issues are very recurrent, no? And of course, sorry for that. And um, in summary, this lecture aims to impart you, the students, the role importance of alternative media and citizen journalism. In the advancement of democ uh, for the advancement of democracy in a country which is the Philippines, where freedom of information is limited and repressed. Do you agree, guys? <laughs> anyway, to move forward. Okay, so let's skip that because we've already had the intro. Okay, objectives: develop an understanding of the differences between alternative media and mainstream media. Second. You'll be able to understand the importance of alternative media content and social commentaries in the advancement of democracy in a country. And of course, we're talking about freedom of speech now. And learn how they, you, the youth, can become a catalyst of change by challenging the status quo and giving way to freedom of expression. Okay. So just a... Uh, um, a little bit of the course outline. So we'll have to define alternative media and its role in today's society. And of course, I will sh be sharing to you um, the different um, and current alternative media groups that we have in the country. And I know some of them you might not, you're, you're not that aware of na exist sila, but they are. That's why we're having this lecture. Um, and we're covering uh, um, about the traditional media and, and media organizations. Um, of course, with that in mind, we are talking about uh, still the ones who um, go for the broadsheets, radio and TV and digital media, where, of course, digital media is, is the most convenient platform in uh, for, uh, today. No? So a lot of up and coming um, organizations have already utilized digital media. And we also have regional alternative media. So it's a very, it's, it's, it's really great that we have this um, platform and discussion so that you'll, you'll also be aware that we have regional alternative media groups. So ito yung mga nasa regions now because of course we, we should recognize these regional media organizations because there's the tendency of course with mainstream media na nagiging Manila centric na yung ating media no so um, it's also important that we um, recognize the um, regional um, media groups and we'll also talk about campus journalism a little bit about it which i know most of you are involved with and the importance of citizen journalism and reportage okay so to start things um, formally we will define what alternative media is and we'll also cover the different entities of alternative media. Okay, so we um, actually um, see them as the watchdogs of society. Well, in general, media is really the watchdogs of society. But uh, in this um, perspective or in this context, the alternative media is actually the watchdog of of mainstream media so um they are it means that it simply means that um these are um they are giving way to uh, to um multiple perspectives so not only the ones that have that are um being um fed by mainstream media so we are but with mainstream media of course we have 
um, dominant ideologies and dominant um, these are uh, all of these information are being um, are are um, created by the dominant um, by the dominant media, no? And this is uh, of course um, in connection with um, mainstream information, while the alternative media groups provide. Um, multiple perspectives no in different issues in society okay so first let's define alternative media no and its role in today's society alternative or independent media we call them indie no are media sources that differ from established or dominant types of media such as mainstream media or mass media in terms of their content production or distribution okay so first how so that we can really uh, um draw a line there between mainstream and alternatives or indie diba ang cool pagka narinig natin yung indie no? so just to draw a line between mainstream and indie no malala ma, we can um we can you can tell no if it's uh, of course if it's being um funded no by large um companies so of course, let's first um, look into examples of mainstream media. Of course, these are the large networks. No? So ABS-CBN, um, which is um, unfortunately, um, wala na sa ngayon, no? um, GMA networks, all of these big networks out there. No? So we call them the mainstream media. And of course, um, the large broadsheets out there, Inquirer, etc. No? So those are the mainstream media. And alternative media is are uh, come from sometimes come from nonprofit organizations. They're funded by nonprofit organizations, and um, they're also um, there are also groups or institutions or alternative um, media institutions that are funded by um, apart from the NGO. They're also funded by other. Um, um government institutions outside so outside of the country so they are not really uh, they do not belong to the big corp they do not they are not part of the big corporations na maliliit lamang sila and sometimes they are um they they are self sustaining no so they fund their own small um firms no and most of the time Ano lang sila, may merong mga alternative um, media firms na uh, paminsan ang bagan lang din sila within the ano ng mga founders no, ang bagan lang din tulong-tulungan lang din no? because they know they don't have sponsors and sometimes they just run their their own um, they need to um, source out no some funds and it's one of the big challenges with with alternative media groups no. And in terms of their content and production and distribution, iba din yung line nila of distribution. So they are not found in 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 big channels, no? Wala sila doon. But rather, they have their own um, and they have their own um, little um, um, distribution channels, no? And as of current, like what I've mentioned, they are making use of digital media because that's the most convenient, no? And of course, it's free. Um, you just need to have uh, a knowledge in in web a little bit of web development and publishing. So that's that's why the current up and coming and budding um, alternative media groups are going for. Okay, so that's their channel of distribution. So the phrase alternative press gained currency in the last years here in the Philippines. No, we saw the existence of alternative media during the Marcos regime. No? So actually during that time, no, um, of course we all know that during uh, the Marcos era, um, the networks no, are being shut down. No? So there's repression in, in, in um, freedom of expression. But these little alternative media groups, no, um, why they had this very important role in our history it's because they were able to distribute information about human rights violations these are some information and some um things that are not being brought to the public but they did that no? um, environmental issues conflict in the south and state of the economy and other issues of public concern so um they brought it out no 
and they shed light to the people, no? Okay, so that was during the Marcus regime. Okay. And of course, we recognize the role of um, alternative media in these situations, no? So one very um, good example is the COVID-19 reportage. Of course, during the pandemic, yun din um, yung time na na-shutdown yung ABS, di ba? So, um, we have um, the alternative media groups, especially those who, who operate um, digitally, no? Like Alter Media, mamaya we will um, um, recognize, uh, we will discuss um, what these media groups are in the digital platform, no? But, ayun, so COVID-19 COVID reportage, disasters, no? Um, during the Yolanda reportage, naging um, crucial ang role ng, um, ng alternative media, especially in the regions, and some of the critical issues in society. So these are some issues that are hindi masyadong napapag-usapan ano, uh, in our mainstream media. But um, sa ngayon, with the parad paradigm shift and things and some of the um, unforeseen um, things and... Um, political um, power relations being brought back and forth no um, we had our our current um, media uh, entities even mainstream media are becoming ano na, no? very critical no so that's a good thing to say no? that's a good thing to know and and take it and take note of that that the press are um, cooperating and um, recognizing, no, even the mainstream pre, uh, mainstream mainstream media, the critical role of mass media in um, bringing these critical issues in society out in the public, no. So some of uh, topics are, of course, the um, very controversial um, um, terror bill, no, and among others. Okay. So ayan, COVID-19 reportage, we've seen um, what, yun nga, um, sadly, during the ABS-CBN shutdown, no? so actually, lahat, lahat, no? even the people, mamaya, we will discuss about, about, um, about the, um, the citizen journalism no? and its role in, in the society no? and being part of also what the alternative media groups are advocating for. So, ayun, COVID-19 um, reportage, um, some disasters. And also, I, if I may add, of course, the, the, the recent um, Bagyong Ulysses no? and Raleigh, um, um, most of the alternative media groups have had this crucial role in reporting, especially in um, reporting um, situations in other regions no na hindi kayang i-cover ng ating um, uh, mainstream media that are located in the metro of course in in in, in Manila no so um naging crucial ang role ng alternative media groups and ng mga and ng citizen journalism in in um, reporting all of what's happening today especially during the disaster and of course kung sino ang nangailangan ng tulong di ba um, ayun. So, and again, critical issues in society. So, all of these um, um, environmental issues, everything that's been happening locally, no? It's been brought into light and it's being discussed freely in these um, alternative media platforms, especially in digital media or in online media. No? Okay. So, I'd like to introduce to you some of the existing um, current alternative media um, groups and entities in the Philippines. Okay, so first we will um, go through the traditional media uh, traditional media organizations. Okay, so I'm not sure if you're familiar of Bulatlat, but um, so Bulatlat has this tagline of journalism for the people. Okay. So, and you can find it in, they have a website now. So, it's at bulletlet.com. So, it's the longest running online uh, media outlet in the Philippines. No? It publishes news, special reports, features, commentary, and, and multimedia on Philippine politics, human rights, the economy, and people's issues. Now, so, that's Bulletlet. 
And actually, um, I think there's um, it's included in traditional media because parang meron silang published um um newsletters that eh, no? I'm just not sure. But ayon, Bulatlat is the most known um alternative media outfit currently in the Philippines, and most of the editors here and writers um come from um. um UP College of Mass Communication and some of them are my professors. So, ayan. Okay. Okay. So, um I'll also cover ayan, Ibon Foundation. Why I included it in here because they have newsletters and they have um they have press um releases, no. So they have printed versions and they have magazines, no. The Ibon Foundation has their um regular um magazines. Uh, so, Ibon Foundation is a non-stop non-profit development organization, and they've been um, serving the Filipino people through research and education since 1978. It's media and communicate. It's the media and communication arm that brings news and features, tackling issues and relevant information in the development se sector. So, actually, Ibon is a is a um, non-profit organization uh, that ma uh, that um, mainly tackles um, economic issues and they are and they cover all sorts of issues that um, concerns the development sector okay and they have a um magazines and other they have special editions actually and rep and reports no um annual reports so even foundation it can be recognized or can we can say we can also um categorize them as one of the um me alternative media um organizations that's been um tackling um crucial social issues no and and they've been giving out research based information for uh, a long time already okay and we have Eiler. So since the 1970s, Eiler has engaged in labor, education, research, training, and advocacy work that empowers workers and promotes their rights. No? So it's it actually stands for the Ecumenical um, Institute for Labor Education. No? And they've been educating workers on basic principles of trade unionism for nearly three decades. So ito naman yung Eiler, they're, um, they're um, educating um, workers, no? And they're, um, of course, giving out information and so, uh, in information on workers' rights, no, and the importance of unions, no, in um, companies and other organizations, no. And PCIJ, of course, we have Philippine Center for Investigative Journalism. So the PCIJ is an independent nonprofit media agency that specializes in investigative reporting. They have. Um, special reports as well. So, um, sa kanila naman, they go for um, various topics and they tackle special reports, um, issues. For example, they also they have um, their own investigative um, report on, for example, the terror bill and during ngayon sa COVID nineteen. Um, they also cover the reportage on that, no? And they give out um, research based um reports all the time and information all the time so pcij is a really great source of information no especially uh, when it concerns some critical issues in society today so and we also have the national union of journalists of the philippines no so this is the lateral guild committed to protect the interests of filipino working journalists no so this is actually an organization um uh um mainly they they um so ang dito naman maraming mga freelancers and some of um the members of um the some of the members of NUJP are have worked in mainstream media as well no so these are most of the members in this um organization are into investigative reporting okay and next um we have alter media, so we'll just go for let's na lang, let's go for the other media groups and <coughs> so we are now covering the digital media platform na okay. So like what I've mentioned earlier, alter media. So uh, actually, alter media is the biggest network currently, no? And I think the sole 
um, alternative media network as of current na in the Philippines. So, Alter Media or People's Alternative Media Network is a network of independent and progressive media outfits, institutions, and individuals. If you go in their website, they have a really um, good website no? wherein you can find all of the information and directories of the different of their different um, regional arms. Alter Media was founded at the first National Conference of Alternative Media held at the University of the Philippines College of Mass Communication, Diliman. So I'm really proud to say that Alter Media, or the biggest and I think the sole alternative media um, network as of current, has been founded in, um, was found in um, UPCMC. No? So that's College of Mass Communication. That's the that's the, the department I've been with for a few years. For a few years, when I um, when I get to finish my MA, so um, that's the uh, brainchild of of um, the college, and it's it was headed by or founded by. Okay, so he's like the. Uh, it's like the father of alternative media here in the Philippines, and he's the our um, professor emeritus. Okay, so let's find out. Na ako ano yung mga different na arm ng alter media. Okay, sorry for that. There's a shuffling of the <laughs> graphics, but anyway, so uh, Pinoy Weekly. It also belongs in the local arm or the regional arm, the local arm of. Um, of Alter Media. So if you go to their website, you can find also the direct link to Pinoy Weekly. So Pinoy Weekly is the voice of the marginalized Pinoy. That's their tagline. Online source for alternative news, progressive views, and the reports and multimedia content. And some of the regional alternative media outfits. Um, some examples would be um, here, I'm very proud to say here, Paghimutad is based in Negros. So Paghimutad is an independent alternative media outlet in Negros Island. So it's an alter media associate. Okay, so um, so uh, they they bring up the plight of Negrosanans. And um, if you want to be updated about the news in, in the Negros Island, no, so you should check out their website. And I know, rather, their page in Facebook, no? And we also have Davao Today. So Davao Today is a daily online news magazine based in Davao City. So it concerns business and politics in the city and nearby towns. And they are covered by Davao Today news team on a daily basis. No? So that's Davao Today. And we, they, we also have Panay Today. So that's for Panay Islands naman. So it's the same. Uh, uh, it's, it's a the Panay version of Davao Today. Okay. Now we go to campus journalism. So what is alternative media groups? We're, we've been discussing about alternative media. And I included uh, campus journalism because, of course, it's um, it's a, a, a rather, not really different, but it's still included. We can say that it could be included in alternative media since it's um, uh, a mainstream media. And... Campus journalism has a vital role no, in today's society, especially in freedom of expression, because we have to also to recognize no, um, the role of, of the youth no, in disseminating um, information that is, of course, timely and is um, in tune. And of course, sino lang ba ang nakaalam ng sarili nilang mga struggles and issues? But of course, the youth. Who, sino ba ang better? Sino ba ang mas karapat dapat na mag um, siwalat ng mga ganung bagay ba kundi yung youth that's why we really we should give importance to campus journalism and of course um, i know some of you have been joining our SPC and SPC yung mga kotesser at kotesser <laughs> sa mga ano ayan i i can see Rahim laughing because siguro Rahim is you're a participant no sa <laughs> sa um, campus journalism or sa school organ yun no? but anyway so i um we can relate to that no especially you know when uh, we are in high school and in college no uh, kami, ako i've been part of of copre that's that's in the visayan arm no and i've been a um, i i i'm a juror for 
our SPC um, in in um, in Luzon. So it's one of um, the things that I'm really passionate of. No, so I, I I'm uh, my heart skips a bit every time I read a very good editorial piece. No, because I cover editorial. Um, um, the editor category. Anyway, so enough of the chica. So let's proceed. Let, what's the role now of the um, campus journalism? And so an example, palato. So um, what better way to introduce it is uh, through examples. So we have student publications and organizations. Some notable um, student publications and orgs are, of course, um, um, I know most of you um, are. Um, or have come across the Philippine Collegian or Dakule. We call that uh, Dakule in UP. No? So the Philippine Collegian is the official student publication of the University of the Philippines, Diliman. No? So um, Dakule is very, uh, um, has special reports as well, and they have very good content. No? They have um, a very good selection of editorial um, pieces. No? And we also have the College Editors Guild of the Philippines. So this is the national arm, and it's the organ the, the the biggest organization, um, campus journalism organization, in the Philippines. No, so it's the College Editors Guild of the Philippines, the oldest, broad, broadest, and actually only existing alliance of um, tertiary student publication in Asia Pacific. Okay, and it's been um, founded since <coughs> 1931. Sorry. Okay. So <coughs> anyway, let's go back. So what's the role of student journalism? Of course, like what I've said, sino pa ba who is the one um ano pa ang sino pa ba ang mas better na makapag-communicate ng um 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 issues and perspectives of students but of course it's own it's the youth only no and these are the student journalists and being part of a being part of a student or of a campus organ no, of, or a school paper uh, most of us it's been um vital in our growth no as uh, our growth as professionals later on no, no? kasi I've been part of um, my high school and college. I'm sorry, um, um, I think someone's mic is on. I can hear uh, some music. Um, hello, I think someone's uh, mic. Ira, I think your mic is on. I can hear some um, ambient um Ira, hello. Yes, po, we... mom, wait po. <laughs> okay, it's okay. Yes. Um, can you please? Sorry. Um, yeah, it's okay. It's fine. It's fine. So I'll continue now. Okay. So just to um reflect on the days that I've been part of our school paper now. So actually, there are some issues um that has not been covered in in major publications in mainstream media that are sometimes um, covered in local um, student papers no and one of the crucial role crucial roles of student um, publications that they they um like for example um, in your own um, schools no kayo of course the us case no meron kayong own um, student publications in your schools diba ang kino-cover mostly ng inyong um, papers would be um, local issues like issues in your community you know you voice out the the local issues or, or some um recurrent issues uh, that concerns your community so of course um these small um these small um, conversations no can be something no it can these topics are if these topics are being brought up like for example um um but, uh, for example no uh, what could be a good topic in a local um, publication would be if there's a controversy or issue in um uh, misuse of school funds so it's one example no that can be that the the youth and the students are engaged too, no, and that they um, it's a uh, it's one way of communicating um local issues and very per and even personal um 
um, concerns, no? That concerns the community or the local community, no? Because if we hone our, um, if we hone the youth, if we hone our students, no? In, in doing, in communicating these issues through school publications, no? Or through their school organs, no? we, we are honing critical citizens, no? So it should start from the youth, no, so in some of the um, in some of the uh, as for the um, journalists today, no, we can. It's a very common story na nag start sila writing for their school paper, and now that they've um, of course they they've seen that their passion and their career is um, going is going for is really into media. Then yun talaga yung springboard na I think most uh, kung hindi man lahat ng mga um, media practitioners, yung student publication, because um, yun nga, um, students or or young minds are able to voice out, no, some issues that are that concerns them, no, and concerns the public and the community, no. So ayun, that's one. That's uh, uh, that's the crucial role of student publication, and eventually, of course, all of these small issues. Um, if we bring it to light, it it branches out to bigger issues, na so bigyan lang kayo ng example. So misuse, so you tackle the misuse of of funds in your school. So for example, you you tackle about uh, misallocation of funds in in um in your homeroom activity or in school field trips, no, and it calls for bigger issues like corruption in the country. So it may lead to I know, and of course the allocation of um school funds and eventually um these small topics may lead to bigger bigger issues, pala. Like for example, a misallocation of funds for for the division of schools or whatsoever, no. So that's why we recognize we have to recognize and um, support. So I'm 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 including um, some stakeholders like the government and institutions, especially um, agencies, no, that are um, involved in the in education, no, to to really um, put some importance and uh, importance and hopefully some funding on um student publications no? especially in public schools no kasi they are the least um kumbaga um may iba wala ngang funds for their school paper no for publications and so is isa sana sa mga bagay sana na that they get funding and so that they can they would be able to you know push for push for um push for student journalism no and hone good writers and critical thinkers no so let's move on Ayun, to citizen journalism. So what's the importance and the role of citizen journalism and reportage in the country? So citizen journalism, <laughs> citizen journalism, or also known as participatory journalism, democratic journalism, guerrilla journalism, or street journalism is based upon public citizens playing an active role in the process of collecting, reporting, analyzing, and disseminating news and information. Actually, itong citizen journalists na to, which is tayo, <laughs> so ngayon, uh, parang sabihin natin na um, everyone is taking their role as <laughs> citizen journalists, you know, but kasi they are, uh, is, uh, they're, uh, we, we can say that it's a one-person operation from collecting information to analyzing or putting it in a in a post, no, and disseminating it, not through it's either through Facebook, Twitter, and whatnot, no. So, um, actually, um, and we can we can actually see it in 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 the current situation that we have in the recent situation that we have with Bagyong Ulysses and and Wally, no. So the people. Um, through the power of I know of their cell phones and their computers, no, we're able to gather funds and and offer aid, no. It's because of the, the because the people itself are are filling in the gaps, no, of the institutions and government organizations, no, na, na supposedly dapat sila yung magfulfill nito, no, uh, of of 
um, offering help to those who are in need and who were devastated by these disasters. Though. But we can see that, you know, people are coming together, um, going for donations and calling for calling for um, donation drives and aid, no? To be delivered to um, those who were devastated by the typhoons, no? So, um, it's it's amazing. But, um, ito lang din, guys, just, uh, ano lang din, even though it's a remarkable thing to note and it's it's amazing to realize how people are, have, have come together and are united, we should still not, um, you know, we should still not uh, be contented with with that because of course um it should be the role it should be the, the, the government and other institutions and other stakeholders role especially the disaster risk um management um arm of the country to respond to disasters no so we are just helping out and buti na lang din na there are a lot of people who are really you know who are who are who are really um coming to terms and really and nag-effort talaga no sa pag um, bigay ng tulong sa ating mamamayan no sa ating fellow Filipinos but we should not settle to that no um and it's not that we 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 just take it and you know parang kapit bisig lang tayo no we should still recognize the lack or the gaps no in this situation, so of course, um, may kulang sa information dissemination. People, citizens are not prompted or are not um, hindi tayo nabigyan ng um, 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 in immediate information na hindi na, na ibaba or hindi na, na ikaskid um, effectively yung communication as to disaster um response and um, prevention no so we we have to recognize that still no and of course we we thank everyone our our um, fellow filipinos for coming together in this um in this um during the disasters no so but ayun um, we have we have to be aware na may mga gaps talaga na kailang um um maging um, accountable no yung uh, ating government and other um, institutions. Okay? So, it should not be always na down to the people, no? So, the people are just coming together as a response to fill in the gaps. Okay? So, if I may quote, the tremendous boost of new media technologies has given birth to the phenomenon of citizen journalism, which has become an integral part of the modern-day society. So, modern-day society na tayo ngayon. Ayan, so... Um, all of us have cell phones, computers, and actually Facebook, um, Twitter has been our source of news na most of us. But of course, ito pala guys, uh, before I go further, no, actually we are just wrapping up our lecture na lang din. We have to be aware din at the same time, no, um, sa difference ng citizen journalism and sa yung, uh, uh, shall I say, um, just getting attention and you also have to be aware of some um, issues na, ka, na, na in connection with, with, with the intention of uh, citizen reportage. No? Kasi may iba na talagang nagpapalaganap ng fake news or disinformation. Or iba pa sikat lamang. So we also have to be critical about that and we have to be aware of that as well no so again following your other lectures you have to double check if this news that we are getting at or this um, um report or facebook post or whatever or twitter post is true no so because of course in this uh currently especially in 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 times of disasters maraming mga opportunista no may ibang tao na talaga nag take advantage ng situation no so instead of calling for help some of them are uh there are some na um who are taking the opportunity to for their self interest no? so you also have to be aware of that no so just um injecting lang din yung mga natutunan natin sa mga iba nating lectures okay and the sense of users participation active role rather than passive in the news process raises the idea of citizen journalism ito yung maganda sa citizen journalism is because hindi lamang 
yung um, yung asset ay hindi lamang tayo um, passive consumers or uh, hindi lamang dumadaan sa atin pas- passively yung information. So what we do is echo news reports um, that we find are critical or something that needs to be discussed. So we are raising our opinions, no, which is very healthy in a democratic society, no. So ayon. Um, there's the participation of uh, the people, no, in in um, information dissemination and um, engagement. So ayon. So that is why. Um, citizen journalism plays a crucial role as well in today's society. Okay. Okay, so I think that's it. Um, so just to wrap everything up, so we have gone through, uh, we defined alternative media and we compared it to mainstream media. And of course, we you've already, I've, I've given you some examples of the existing um, alternative media groups and their role in today's society, especially in in in, in extraordinary situations like in, in um, disasters and how um, it has effectively, um, as effective and how these institutions and even the role of citizen journalism in reporting um, vital issues in society that are not being covered by mainstream media, no. So, um, ayon, maybe we can go for the Q and A na for now, and include ko na lang din sa section na to na yung question na what are your main takeaways in this short lecture. So, ayon, can we? Um, anyone can raise their hand and unmute their mic. Anyone who wants to. Go for it. Go with Any that. question, guys? All right. So anyway, may anonymous na yung mga questions dito with oh, with me, Miss Mel. All right. So if nag formulate pa sila ng ideas, I can throw in questions to you. Sige, go lang. Okay, right. okay. So um, one question here from one of our participants is that can alternative media can also be used as a channel to proliferate fake news? Well, um, as of current, um, that is why also you have to be, uh, be keen, no? So, isa lang din sa aking paalala kanina, no? That we also have to be keen, no? And um, cross-check. While um, mainstream media and alternative media, all of this, hindi naman siya um, conclusive, ano? Sa as to when you say the absolute truth. No, and it's it de- also depends on how we define fake news. So it's just putting things in context, no, and double checking things as well. And yes, that can be possible. That can be possible. That is why we have gone through um like what we have, uh, just like what we've discussed in our previous lecture on the on media landscapes and how to um deconstruct media messages and how to analyze um responsibly some media messages no so we have to cross check double check um and um take our part and our role in verifying news but what the what alternative media is aiming for is that um sa kanila they are giving out multiple views no or perspectives in a in a particular topic no so most of the time these are not this is, uh, it's not part of the dominant na, I don't know, they, since they are not part of the dominant group, so hindi siya mainstream information or it's not the the ones you see in, uh, mostly seen in, in um, mainstream media channels, no? So, um, we are aiming for, uh, they are aiming for multiple views, no? Uh, topic. But yes, uh, possible siya. So, ayun. Yeah, you mentioned about uh, multiple views, um, which leads me to the next question. Na merong okay. nagsend sa atin dito. That's uh, pretty much related to the next one. So, what if nga if there are two different alternate, uh, there are two different alternative media groups that feeds us varying and conflicting information? How do we manage this? Okay, ang ano lang din kasi. Ato kasi yung sa alternate uh, most um, and some in some um. 
alternative media organization. So, we have this thing na parang insider report. Na. So, I guess, so parang meron, that's why hindi siya mainstream and they, they are, um, and we also, are, if you're aware of whistleblower um, news, no, or, or reportage, no, that is why paminsan, they are being seen as um, these alternative um, media organizations uh, are, are, are are seen as as somewhat like um, they are tagged as a um, uh, as an antagonist voice. <laughs> so so antagonistic yung views da nila, kasi nga they are sometimes and most of the time they are rebutting a a a, a dominant or mainstream information. No, so um, ayon. Uh, so going back to the question. So, um, pero parang ano naman eh, medyo hindi pa naman ako nakakita ng gano'n. Ah. <laughs> so, my knowledge lang naman, no, being part ah. of, 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 of um, alternative media, no. So, parang wala pa naman ako nakikita ng conflict. Siguro ano lang, um, if we're talking about technical information, like statistics, siguro may slight, siguro hindi maiwasan yung, um, tag na ito, hindi maiwasan yung... Uh, discrepancies, shall we say? So, mm-hmm. but when but when it comes to views, no perspectives, for, by uh, by far, parang hindi pa naman. Um, when we're talking about the, the um uh, for example, alternative media group A, and this is alternative media group B, parang wala pa naman ako nakikita ng ganon, uh, um, Jara. So, uh-huh. ano ko lang share ko lang kasi a few years back or last year lang ba yun? Um, because I myself travel for for research meron kasing um in the in the not so uh openly publicized part of Mindanao um yung areas natin ng mga like south um southern um Surigao ganun um there was one time na post about um as pero hindi to kasi alternative media group as as I as I understood your your presentation the government says na it's it's another group who does this and then this other alternative media group would present otherwise na hindi daw ito part ng revolutionary movement things like that so sometimes we are conflicted with what we read from to exactly the same situation from two different sources kasi kahit um may mga government agencies din na nagpapalabas sa sarili nilang mga publicities. Pero we see on the other hand, sa ibang publicity naman na non-governmental, alternative media groups na iba siya. Uh, I, I'm not asking you to answer that because it's really uh, uh, a reality that is so... It, that, is, that has manifested in our times. Ganon. So anyway, there's a question here that Rocky posted in our chat box. Let me just read to you that, Ms. Mel. Oh. Okay. Rocky asked, are bloggers alternative media too? Can we as bloggers use this in spreading the truth and not bearers of fake news if we are importing our own views? Ayun, my hehe. Hi, <laughs> ayun. <laughs> ayun, ayun. See, of course, um, shall we say, um, yeah, part then, of course, bloggers are also part of, of citizen journalists. You know, or alternative media. Actually, alter media or alternative media is us. It's the people. We are separate from, we are not part of corporations because just so you know, of course, mainstream media is uh, operated um, um, with to, uh, with, with, in, with um, the goals of first, hindi natin maiwawala. Like in our, if, if, if we can recall our last lecture that um, media content was of course created na, with the intention of of gaining profit, no? so we are since we are not profit driven, so of course we are just telling the truth or um, communicating our own, or, or we are just sharing our own opinions, no? so these are untainted views, no? so since we are not driven by profit or anything like that, uh-huh. so anyway, with bloggers, yes, of course you you are part of of alternative media. That's what I want to say, eh, that, that alternative media is us. It's the people. Um, campus journalists are part of it. Um, you know, bloggers. Sa so, ngayon, kasi ang hirap mag, ano eh, ang hirap mag-categorize na Zara in today's society na who's, um, and ang hirap din mag-point ng finger as to who has, who should be, who, who should have the authority to 
um uh, bring out information no in our current um in 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 the current society no sino bang may karapatan <laughs> or who the authority no kasi actually this yung mainstream media na no? um following the shutdown of ABS-CBN no, no? It, it's hard to follow no so we have public um uh, have public figures who likes to assert um, the authority in 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 bringing out information and we have this villager so so ang hirap na din mag ano no mag 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 point ng fingers or mag draw ng light but if your intention of course is if you're a blogger and your intention is to bring out the truth um and your critical um, um points of view and your opinion then make use of of your tool so if you're good in in blogging you're a good writer then make use of it no so and of course we should be i tell and then um siguro pa, uh, i i'd like to ano lang din i'd like everyone to na to 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 advise everyone to of course if you if you go for um critical blog post make it um as much as possible um research based no so we have credible websites that you can quote No, para lang din credible tayo, hindi yung mema lang. <laughs> Sorry for that. So, Uh-oh. different yung mema lang sa, you know, taking a an ob- mer- taking into uh, taking a an objective based um tag na to, um uh, uh, taking everything in, uh, as objective as possible, no? So, we have also to um go for Um, resources that are credible enough and we have to cite those sources. So, um, isa lang din sa mga bagay na uh, I'd like to remind everyone, even though that we are really um, high na high tayo and we are really um, we have this enthusiasm burning in us that we wanted to be this um, tool for, I know, for for uh, progressive information. Uh, but we have also to make sure that meron tayong sources Um, not in a site and that are also credible. It's research and good research and research based. But I am also not, um, kumbaga, I, but I am also not saying that if you have your own opinion and if it's not research based that you, um, you, you that you just shove it off, no? Because sometimes, no? Um, if I may quote the feminist movement, no, in the 70s and 80s, uh, yung yung punk uh, and the loom workers uh, movement, no, that the personal is political. So yun yung yun, like what I've mentioned uh, kanina nga sa sinasabi ko sa role ng ng campus journalism, ano, na sino pa bang mas better na mga communicate ng mga sarili nating issues kundi tayo lamang because that is very local and organic to us because we are the ones directly affected by these issues no like for example indigenous people so i uh, um in encourage ang um, local journalism and student um, journalism in 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 schools no in local communities because they are the only ones who know who know um yung problems nila sa kanilang community no so as bloggers no ika, for example ikaw bilang um, youth of today's society you have your own issues you have your own um concerns no that you want to to communicate no so ayun just a quote so the personal is political so every opinion counts in today's society but of course we have to be ano din, aware and be extra careful lang din no, sa pag disseminate ng information Ayun. So when you want to critic daw, make sure that you cite. Make sure that whatever yes. you're talking about is uh, founded with a strong basis. Yes. Uh, Miss Mel, ito meron pang question dito sa atin. Um, ito na masyado na na-empower ang ating mga participant <laughs> kasi uh, marami na silang in, ano, eh, lectures in the past few what? Third week na tayo ngayon. Eh. Um, meron tayong isang question dito from June. So he sabi niya, let's say may, uh, mainstream media Uh, which is generally owned by big media networks, are influenced by social, political, and economic factors, most especially legal influence, um, i.e. yung ABS-CBN niya. So how much of such influences affect alternative media? Um, sorry, can you please repeat the question? I'm just okay. trying to get the... Okay, oh yeah. Sabi niya, so you mainstream media are influenced by social, political, and economic factors, most especially by legal influence. Katulad na yung nangyari sa ABS, kasi nga, di ba, na, na, natanggal yung kanilang franchise because of, it's a legal 
sa legal question nga daw, ayun. So how much of such influence affect uh, alternative media? Actually, ano, uh, to correct that, it's, um, the, well, well, what's legal here, of course, it's political. <laughs> it's, a, it's a political issue uh-huh. naman, it's a ABS, you know? So there's, um, um, there's a uh, political issue yeah. behind that, you know? So, and of course, we are just, uh, kung gusto mo ma-legitimize yung mga bagay-bagay, go for the legal road, <laughs> diba? <laughs> so, ganun lang din yun. So, pwedeng magkaso kahit walang kaso. Uh-huh. <laughs> So ayun, so Uh-oh. to legitimize because of course we we have the law to legitimize everything. So even though it's um you know you can legalize something that is illegal. So, um that's that that's the scary part of of what's happening today. So how it directly affects um multimedia ah sorry, how it directly affects the alternative media groups, you know. So I'm just saying so Like everyone is scared. Hindi <laughs> hindi ko alam kung paano ko sasagutin yung tanong. Exactly, it exactly. Presents, it presents it presents a uh, it presents a clear um a, a clear and um present danger to all of the media organization. That is why uh, um natutuwa ako nang kasi na you know, even the mainstream media are coming together to fight for exactly. For press freedom, hashtag press mm-hmm. freedom. So we are coming together and we are recognizing the, you know, the the effect of 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 um what's happening today, especially with the, with, with everything with the, with the administration and all of the other stakeholders. No, so um, siguro, uh, let's zone in alang siguro and focus on that I- issue. No, no, no. Uh, since uh, these issues are heavily um, politicized, or it's it's a political question that we've be, or it's a political issue that we've been trying to deal all this time, no? So, masabi ko lang it it presents a clear and present danger sa ating press freedom, and the press freedom is endangered, no? And that is why uh, we are talking about citizen journalism and um, people coming together, no? to seek for the truth and speak out the truth no kasi nanganganib yung ating mga media organizations no? so <laughs> ganon mm-hmm. so actually it's it's going to answer this ano pero maybe you can just briefly answer this question so with what is happening diba anyone can just put up a site i mean um anyone can just put up a site Um, beef it up with content or can just um, yung bibili nga ng Facebook pages, di ba? So, how, how do we protect ourselves from the kind of publicities na attack tayo by um, alternative media groups daw sila? Ayun. Ah, guma- uh, kunwari, alternative media groups sila? Parang ganun, they are pretending as something mm-hmm. like that? Uh, actually, it's <laughs> Mm-hmm. It will have to be if you re, if you are really in tune of the of the news and what's happening around social media. There are um fake accounts posting that they are part of this in or uh, they're part of these groups. Actually, hindi lamang media, but part of um groups. Let's say um um activist organizations, na so um that are posting that are are are. Posting um, or creating fake social media accounts and websites to um, defame um, these um, legit, <laughs> legitimate alternative media groups or these legitimate organizations, no, that are um, that are going for the progressive views. So yes, how do we protect ourselves? By fact checking, of course, by fact checking, and you can mm-hmm. see by using the tools that this. Um, very very good initiative that we have right now by um, using the tools. The, uh, of course, um, break the fake has a toolkit, no, for everyone to use, and we have credible websites to uh, make use of, no, to fact check. So, ayon. Um, we just have to be careful and always fact check, and uh, kasi malalaman mo naman yan. <laughs> if it's a troll account you can see it in the comment section check the comment section check the profile kung sino mga friends noon kung naging tama ay yung friend nito eh parang wala naman mga friends nito yung friend nito friend naman nito so 
makikita mo naman yan, mararamdaman mo siya. And um, most often, these fake accounts and these troll accounts, no, they are very aggressive. They are very mm-hmm. aggressive and they are really reeling you into believing um, something na hindi naman totoo. So, ayun. Ayun. Yeah. Diba? And then, if you remember, ye- uh, yesterday with Doc Ligot, um, sino na ka na-member ng nang he mentioned about Facebook ad library. I think I have no idea about that until he mentioned it na pwede mo palang malaban kung ano yung previous name ng Facebook page. Kasi we can only be notified with that if we are already following the page. But what if we were just invited later on if it has become an advocacy or campaign type of Facebook page? So, kasi di nga, di ba, binibili na nila if marami ng follower and things al- yeah. like that. Oo. So, sana na pulot nyo, nyo yun from the lecture kahapon. Kasi yun yung pinaka, ay, oo oh, nga, no. So, maybe <laughs> next time, if there's some parang fishy na Facebook page, titignan ko yung, titignan ko yung Facebook ad library na sinasabi ni Doc ayun, kahapon. Yes. May, kasi yun nga, um, ini-incubate kasi yung mga accounts na yun. So, we call that in the, in the web development spectrum, incubation. So, para, that's to gain traction. So, that's a very good, ano, no, na at least nagkaroon ng lecture about that. Mm-hmm. Diba? Or ako lang ba nakakatch nun? <laughs> Sino nakakatch nun? Raise hand. Rahim, na-catch mo ba yun, Rahim, kahapon? Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, uh, I'll read the more questions here sa ating chat box. Um, are alternative media more political than mainstream media? What do you think with this, um, Ms. Mel? Are they more political? Okay. How do you define political? <laughs> <laughs> Mas open yeah. ba silang mag-criticize? Mga ganun ba? Uh. That's the ano kasi, that's the thing about the term political. What's political ba? So we have this notion that it's if it's political, it's something antagonistic, no? So hindi naman kasi ganyan. Being political means that you are um you are subscribed to a political um thought, no? Or a a a, a mindset or a belief, political belief. No? So if you are into believing the mainstream um, or the dominant um, uh, 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 if you are into um, believing dominant perspectives then that could also be political no? so let's ano ha this is something that i would like to clarify to everyone no and, and um yun lang yung medyo na uh, concern lang din no? uh, especially us na um uh, in the in in the communication uh, field no and as educators that we should not um we should not see the term political as something um antagonistic or opinionated no it's not guys ha so um being political means that you are subscribing in a specific political belief no so but if i may put it into context yung question siguro well, um political or more of uh, that's um siguro um that's because um these media uh, alternative media groups are more critical rather siguro i think the more up term would be critical no so um ayun not really political but critical are they more critical yes they are more critical because Nowadays, guys, mm. critical thinking and being critical is something that is is something that is um, actually what we need right now in this current society. But is something that's been um, you know may, uh, being put in 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 a bad light, no? So because we have this um, intellectual shaming, na na ano so and that's not healthy and. And sa ngayon kasi, if you have different views, if you have a different perspective on a particular thing, and that is not of the status quo, and if you're not subscribing to the majority's um, nito, um, opinion, then you are something um, political. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know the term, cri- but we have to use critical. And being critical is healthy. And dapat ganun tayong mm-hmm. lahat because we 
because with being critical, we are using our own agency and our own intellect, no? And we are not being passive, no? People, or we are not being passive uh, with everything that's surrounding us. We use our head, we use our brain to analyze things, no? And not just take in and accept accept everything that's going on. <laughs> so, yeah. Ayan, napagsabihan tayo ni Tita na dapat we need to use our mind and our intellect. Ayan. Ayan. Well, I think there's a lot of questions. Gusto-gusto nila yung lecture mo but I'll just kind of narrow it down with okay, last two ayan. guys. Sige, so sige. kung mayroon pa kayong ibang question, actually pwede naman natin pag-usapan yan sa ating GC and we can just deliver the question to Miss Mel. Pero second, the last question is ito. Okay. Paano po ba kung I will spread information news but not using media? He mentioned media but maybe he means social media or um, the on- online. So, maatatawag pa rin po ba akong isang um, sit- uh, part ng people journalism? Yes, of course. Like what I've said, um, pag sinabi kasi natin media, of course you're part of a of an organized um or uh, uh organized of an organized group ano that's what we are ato lang pa we are discussing about technical terms okay so para lang din malinaw guys when you say media we are talking about an organized um organization um that is responsible for the collection um creation and distribution of information so that's media so we defined media nana and then when we say about when we talk about citizen journalism um we are talking about we that's we are referring to the people and yes if you create your own um website nor if you have your own if you use your own um facebook account if you use other digital platforms and um you are just a single entity, no? You're just you, no? Who's been um, the... Like what I've mentioned kanina, di ba? Citizen journalists are... Ano sila, no? One one person operation sila kasi they're responsible in the collection, creation, and distribution of information. Diba? So yes, oo. You, you are part of the... Ano, and um, alternative um, journalism na lang siguro actually like what i've been repeatedly saying is us it's it's the people it's news and information from uh, by the people to the people no so ayan ayan um it's important that we all take part to this big um, uh, big body of putting the information out there which brings me to the last question actually personal question ko to masyado akong engaged <laughs> in sa lecture na to oh, yeah. so I like the I like the one you mentioned about regional alternative media. Ayun. So I see a great prospect in bringing out issues kasi to um from this remote community. Hindi naman talaga remote. Let's say um non-Metro Manila um concerns and issues. I'm so glad to know na hindi ka rin based in Manila that you are just kapitbahay ko lang po si ano si si Miss Mel taga Bacolod lang siya. And as you know guys, I am based in Iloilo. I'm so, currently based in Bacolod. <laughs> Oh, yun. Mag, magkatabi lang kami ng province. Ah. Pero may dagat kami in between. Ayan. So, can you advise our SK leaders here on maybe how they can start or initiate this kind of alternative media group? Yung regional. Kasi ako personally, as like, sabi ko nga, as repeated dito the participants, I see that there's a lot of information that doesn't come out to the mainstream. Kasi nga, regional news siya. Um, I think Rahim also about mentioned last time about um pagbubuli in pero uh, um cultural group level hindi siya personal level kundi cultural group i thought that's already super passed out of the of the issue not until i also was i was i was in marawi Rahim, many months many months ago for research and also for other parts of mindanao for research and then i saw a lot of newsworthy items pero why is it nobody talks about it so if these participants who come from all over the Philippines wants to create their own alternative media group, how do they start this? Okay, so ano kasi, um, Jar, of course, with alter media, since they are, it's, they're already established, you know, um, they're already established, of course, um, like what I've mentioned, no, being a media group no, or a firm, um it, it's an organized um it, it, it's a it, they are organized no so but if you wanted to start 
um in a very indie sense ano it's it, it's actually ano very easy lang start a blog <laughs> start a website there you have it in this ano in this um age of technology everything is possible you can start a blog overnight no and do your own research no and if you are really passionate and um siguro ma advice ko lang uh, para lang din um um you, you can have a, a a clear path in creating that um uh, that um goal of yours to have a a, a a a alternative media group in your own community start with local information or local news okay, for example um like yun yun na mention ko that's why i i'm really into advocating student um or uh, i'm really into advocating student publications ano kasi they know their local issues no and in for example ayun nga din siya sabi yung um in some communities um remote communities ano and indigenous communities no ang problema lang kasi Um, yun nga um, in these areas walang nag uh, kumukuha walang nag-gather ng information mm-hmm. and if there's a nearby or if there's a group which is sana meron na magkaroon tayo no that would be really great because um yun nga yung currently of course we've been experiencing uh, uh, not all of us are aware about the about the various issues concerning our indigenous groups you know Um, some of the the issues that concern them is of course um yung pagreclaim na kanilang land, them being um the buckwheats <laughs> no, that we have, no. So all of these concerns and all of these issues no are not um bought in the public. So it would be really great to start one in your own community and it's so easy. Put up a website sa ngayon because um as of credit wala pa kayong funding so put up a website put up a page no start with your local news start with something that's very close to you and you are directly affected of no so if for example if you are if you are um if you are uh, a lumad no so um talk about issues in your community talk about the um the schools no the, the the current issues that's happening in 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 the schools no in 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 looped um um groups no so so start locally start within your community yun yung sinasabi ko that's one way on how to and that could be a springboard no for for um a bigger for a bigger um for bigger things no so ayun and it's kansano if we're talking about ano lang din um Um, online lingo. We started uh, started your own niche, <laughs> kasi kayo mm-hmm. um and started your own niche, no? If you are into women's rights, if you're if you are, ako, uh, personally, I'm into breastfeeding. That's my personal advocacy. I'm into breastfeeding, so I create films. I cre- I create studies, researches into breastfeeding. If you are um if you wanted to, kayo if you are sa mga SK, you know, in your own, kung saan yung sinasakupan ninyo, why not create, at yun pala, yun, magandang suggestion lang din na nag-pop sa aking mind right now. What if you you create your own um, website, no, that is um, locally based in your, ano, LGUs, no, that is being run by the youth, the SKs, no? So, magandang idea yan, magandang project yan, Jara. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> sana, na, oh, sana, guys. Na, oh, <laughs> sana naisip nyo yan. <laughs> Support kami oh. dito sa inyo sa Media Civics Love. Oh. Oh. Diba? So, uh, so that local, anong pwedeng pag-usapan nyo doon? Ayan, magsasuggest na ako ng mga categories. And by the way, if you if you are, if you planning to do one, you can, you can um, contact me. I have my contact information. I can help you with it. Yay! No? So, <laughs> so, very helpful. So, um, you can, what, What topics can you discuss? Anong categories anong pwede niyo i-put up sa website niyo? Local news, no? So, um, you can have your own bulletin there. Jobs portal. You can, everything is possible within your own community, no? So, um, go for your own niche, no? So, you are very much aware of what's happening in your LGU. So, why not start there? And then, eventually, take on the bigger issues. National issues. Actually, the national issues, the bigger issues concern your local issues, no? So, Take it from there. Um, go for topics the 
ano uh, for example there are of course uh, local news about disaster response no and what's in store for next year no um where you can cascade information as a pl- ang plans ninyo for the L- for your own um districts or LGUs de ba so ang ganda din ang, ang ganda ng possibilities and I really like that you know Jara was able to to bring that out ano, because you can really definitely do that in your own um, LGUs especially for SK so are and I know a lot I, I, I know some friends na mga SK officials na talagang part of their student publications and they are um, aiming for you know creating their own local website so and you can also be part of your own um, and why not create a a local newsletter that can be circulated around your ano and it could be part of your it could be part of your projects no kasi you have funds you have funds and you can make use of that no so create a three page newsletter doon pa lang meron ka na you are you are initiating something no um doon pa lang pwede na uh, a website a newsletter hindi kailangan siyang maging lucrative hindi siya mag kailangan maging complex it could start very simple no and start with your own local issues your own um concerns and issues within your community start there ayun and you will be on for a good st- and you will be on for bigger um things no so use that as a springboard ayun di ba ang exciting ng pwede nating gawin so here in the civics lab if you really want to do this if it's just just it, if it's not just my wild thoughts baka gusto niyo rin yung ganong idea we i think we could be able to help right and as you see yes. si miss mel nag nag ano na siya nang pwede siya maghelp out to you guys if you want to initiate this kind of project and this is exactly why Media Civics Lab is created. So that we will be able to help you out on your on your projects that is related with everything about putting information out there. It's not just stopping the bad or the fake information, but also putting the right ones out there. Because um, dami ko rin gustong example with with all these outskirts na communities pero hindi na, na, na put out yung information sa mainstream because hindi siya Metro Manila. Exactly yes. yun lang yung reason. Okay? It's because so, our mainstream media is Manila centric no. So ayun. Mm-hmm. And with the shutdown of ABS, actually kasi we have regional ABS uh, network mm-hmm. no? and ngayon wala na. <laughs> so oh. uh, sayang talongkot. Oh. Oh maybe si the ano the the Maranaos can write about uh, one of the ito gusto ko na talaga sabihin gusto ko nang i-cut that we're over time Go. but oh uh, um there is one vital information that we got when I was doing my research in 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 Lanao that for example after ng ng what happened in Marawi siege there was a lot of donations and projects and this and that however it does not fit with the culture it does not fit with the needs it does not fit with the realities of the natural surroundings sample lang yung bangka di ba yung mga bangkang dito donate diyan so hindi siya ma so maybe you can start talking about it as simple as that. It's not for us outside your communities to, to write about it or to talk about it. Because yes. you own the information, it's about you. Anyway, we're over time, but it's a great conversation. Um, sabi nga namin, don't just critic, join the conversation. Yes. So um, we just heard with Miss Mel. So thank you very much. The importance of citizen journalism. Um, it it was very true especially with our recent uh, typhoon that happened no yung typhoon Ulysses if not for social media hindi natin na respond yung call for not just for fundraising there was also a call for rescue operation itself if you saw in social yes. media there's hashtag rescue something hindi lang siya yeah, yeah. tulungan natin ito ng food and clothes it's actually at the very moment of the disaster yes. Social media and citizen journalism was able to help and save lives. So yeah. that's how important it is. It should be enabling, not stopping us from doing the right thing. Um, so and dami natin na pag-aralan this week. So tomorrow, I'd like to invite everyone. It's going to be the panel discussion tomorrow and if you have questions to our panelists it's, it's time to bring it out there kasi sabi nga natin journalism and media is about the people iko quote ko na to si Miss Mel always the, si, uh, journalism is not about us as just a consumer nito dito tayo yon tayo rin ang maglabas ng information 
And if you guys have problems with the internet because it's hard for us to connect through Zoom and alike, um, we have made sure that you can stream through Facebook and you can just ask questions through there. So, um, but not the Monday to Friday sessions. The Monday to Friday sessions is privately and exclusively for you guys. Pero yung Saturday panel discussion natin is live in Facebook. So if you have difficulties with your connections tomorrow, you can just go ahead and hit the play button. Ayun. So thank you very much, Miss Mel. And thank you very much sa ating napaka-active na group ngayon. I think ang dami na natin na pag-aralan in the last three weeks. So thank you very much. And for me, the Civics Lab, thank you. And thank God it's Friday. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks, Jara. Thanks, everyone.